Hello and welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm Underhook and this is my review of the French Tier 4 heavy tank, the B1. So is it any good? No, it's no good. It can do okay in Tier 4 games. In Tier 5 it's a total disaster. Now this tank, just like the DW2, which is the German Tier 4 tank, which also is awful, um, it does get preferential matchmaking. So you'll never see a Tier 6 tank when you're driving the B1. It only goes into tiers four and five, uh, partially because it's so terrible. Let's get into the review. It has 420 hit points, which is average for a tier four heavy tank. Not that there are many of them. There's only this, the DW2, and the premium PZB2740. Um, now, weight-wise, it weighs 30 ton, which is exactly the same weight as the other two heavies in this tier. Speed of 30 kilometers an hour in forward and 10 kilometers an hour in reverse is, you'd have to say, you know, average or low side of average. The DW2 is 35 kilometers an hour in forward and 12 in reverse, so the DW2 is a faster tank, whereas the B2 Premium is the same speed. Now, track traverse wise, though, the tank is awful. It has a track traverse of 28. The DW2 has 32, and the Premium tank, the uh, the B2 has 45, so track traverse, it's very slow at turning. The turret traverse of 31 is also awful, and it's really noticeable in this tank. So the DW2, for comparison, has a turret traverse of 44, as does the B2 as well. So very slow turret traverse, which means that any sort of light tanks or anything coming up behind you can uh, circle you at will. Turning your track and turret at the same time is the only way you have a chance of keeping up with them, but even then it's hard. And I do find sometimes that I turn quickly my aim to aim at a tank and then wonder why, how come how come my, my gun sight aren't on the tank yet? And it's because the turret is still turning. It takes a long time. And then uh, it feels as though it takes a long time to aim. It actually doesn't take a long time to aim. It just you have to wait so long for the turret and then it starts to aim that it's very hard to hit anything moving or or to change your aim radically now the tank does weigh in uh, sorry does have a view range of uh, 330 meters which is exactly the same as the other two and it has a signal range of 710 meters which is uh, the same as the dw2 but it's better than the b2 Camouflage wise, this tank, uh, well, it, it's worse than the other two heavy tanks, but it's uh, not much worse. They're all pretty much the same. And, you know, heavy tank camouflage isn't great. So it's not, not great camouflage, which is to be expected. As far as the gun depression goes on this tank, it's actually not that, well, it's good gun depression, but it's not as good as the other two. It has eight degrees of gun depression, which compares to 10 degrees on the W2 and the B2 and it's 18 degrees of elevation compared to 20 on the other two tanks. How, that said, however, the, the gun depression is pretty good and you can, you know, do pretty well. The, the turret is right up towards the front of the tank, which also helps in that respect. Uh, so yeah, I found it not, not too bad by the gun depression wise, and yeah, it, it works on hills fairly well. All right, let's have a look at the, quickly have a look at the grind for this tank. Now, there's quite a bit to upgrade, and I found the grind for this tank to be extremely painful. In the first game I'll show you, you'll see that the tank uh, doesn't have the engine or the tracks upgraded yet. And the track and engine upgrade do transform the tank. I skipped the middle engine and went to the, the, this engine. This engine has 350 horsepower compared to the stand engine 180. Uh, once you do that, the tank becomes much faster and turns much better. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a huge difference. So if you're thinking of keeping the tank, it's definitely well worth doing those. You have to upgrade the tracks anyway to get to the next tank. As far as the guns go, well, they're awful. Uh, I'm not going to bother talking about the other guns because they're even worse than this gun. All right, it's a 47 millimeter gun, has a great rate of fire of 28.57. That is a really, really quick firing gun. Penetration now of 66 is awful, and the damage of 55 is actually not bad with, combined with that rate of fire. It's mainly the penetration that's the issue on this gun. Accuracy of 0.39 isn't that good, but it's all right. The aiming time, though, of 1.5 is fantastic aiming time. Really, really good aiming time. 
But like I said, because a turret moves so slowly, it feels like you've got a long aiming time because you're actually waiting for the turret to turn and then you're waiting for the aiming time. Whereas most tanks, you know, pretty much as soon as you turn and look at them, it's not, long, not long after your gun's already pointing down, then, then you start waiting for the aiming time. This time, this gun, you spend ages waiting for the turret to turn. And often I find it's much quicker to turn the hull uh, and, the, and the gun at the same time to try and get it to point at them. Um, but that's it, yeah. The major problem is the penetration. Now, if you decided to use premium ammunition exclusively, which I wouldn't be surprised if a heck of a lot of people do, that'll take your penetration up to 98, which would make the whole tank perform a lot better. I didn't do it, um, but you could. I think I actually modified a couple of rounds at Matildas and things like that with the premium ammunition just to test it out, and it didn't penetrate, but yeah, it, it could. Now, um, and might have been a KV-1 I fired at and bounced off as well, I think. Things, t any tier five tank really rips this tank to pieces. All right, let's uh, get back to this. So yeah, I think I've told you mostly about it. It is a tank that um, at tier four, you can kind of go front line and angle your armor. It'll do all right. And you'll penetrate most tanks. AMX 40s, Matildas, heavily armored tanks like that, you will have a lot of trouble with. And uh, they, yeah, especially, at least the AMX can't fire back very well, but Matilda will just rip you to pieces. Uh, M3 Lee, and the other, the B2, and the DW2, you can have quite good brawls with those tanks, and if you angle, they all have a lot of trouble penetrating you, and if they don't angle, you'll be able to penetrate them, so you can have quite good battles with those sort of tanks, but if something else half decent comes along, you're in trouble. The uh, crew for the matches that you'll be watching is, uh, well, right now they're 87% trained. So the crew will be anywhere from sort of 80 to 87% uh, trained. Uh, the, the grind in this tank, by the way, is very, very painful because, I'll give you an idea, I, um, it only sees tiers four and five because it gets preferential matchmaking. But I played, uh, what did I play? About 47 games in this tank to get it elite. 31 of those games were tier 5 and 14 were tier 4 so it looks like it basically says okay all those games that would have been tier 6 we're going to make them tier 5 we're not going to split them between tier 5 and tier 4 so you get a lot of tier 5 games hence you're getting killed pretty early most likely and also a lot of shots will bounce against tier 5 tanks anyway so it's very hard to get a decent score so you're not earning much XP and especially if you're on a losing team. On a losing team, you might only be getting 200 XP a game. Winning team, maybe 500 a game. So it takes a long time, a lot of games to grind through a tank. It is very painful. And I wouldn't mind betting a lot of people free XP this tank altogether. But I'm reviewing it, so I can't do that. <laughs> we'll have a look in Tank Inspector now, check out the armor, and then get into some gameplay for you. Whilst I did tell you what the driver's skill were in this in the gameplay. I forgot to tell you the equipment I will have. Small repair kit, large repair kit, large first aid kit, and I will have binoculars, camouflage net, and toolkit fitted. Alright, the B1 armor in tank inspector. Let's go straight to the colorized view, and here we can see the front of the tank has 60 millimeters of armor, pretty much all over. We do have these other couple of areas though that only have 45 mil. So there's this area here which has the large gun in it. I'll show you that there. So this section here with that big gun which we can't use is only 45 millimeters and the driver's viewport is 45 millimeters as well. Having a look at the side of the tank, we can see the sides actually comparatively quite well armored with 60 millimeters all over. We have a front section here near the front drive wheel which is uh, 10 millimeters of uh, spaced armor over the top of the 60 mils of armor. So it's giving us even more protection. Down here, we also have spaced armor protecting the tracks somewhat. And at the rear here, over the rear drive wheel, or the rear drive wheel itself actually acts as spaced armor, 20 mils of spaced armor over the top of 60, which comes up as 80, the same as the rest of the tank. Oh, sorry, it comes up as 80, which is better than the rest of the tank. Looking at the rear of the tank, we still have uh, 55 mils of armor, which is pretty good, and a lot of things like the Panzer 1C will have a lot of trouble penetrating the tank anywhere at all. Looking at the upper deck is 25 millimeters thick, which is quite thick for a tier 4 tank, and the top of the turret at 30 is quite thick also for a tier 4 tank. So you are protected somewhat from artillery, which is good because you're a big target. 
Having a look now at the turret, we can see the turret ring itself here, which is quite pronounced turret ring, is fairly well armoured at 60 millimetres, which is a good thing. The rest of the turret though is uh, not that great at 46 millimetres, which makes the compiler a fairly easy penetration. The actual turret itself is a little bit harder to penetrate because it is uh, angled and sloped a little bit, which makes it a fair bit hard. You can see here it's a ricochet. In closer it can be penetrated, but it, it's quite still sloped. The actual mantle itself is pretty good though, with 30 millimeters over 46 millimeters, so it's uh, spaced armor. And the pink section here, you see 46 over 46, which is not too bad. If we get close to the gun, it's still actually pretty good. There aren't many hollow areas. There's a little one there, but that's about it. So that's pretty good. Top of the turret though, and I have been penetrated here, is, you know, as we said, 30 millimeters. So sometimes I aim for Capola, but it goes through here. Such is life. Um, to give you an idea of just how bad this tank is, we have uh, penetration of 67. If we angle the tank, you pretty much have trouble. See 70 there? You can't even penetrate another B1. This tank is worth, with such strong side armor, is worth angling, as you can see here. It does work quite well angled. The turret can still be penned, but front on the mantle looks good. So definitely angle your tank towards other targets. And other B1s, the same as you, you won't be able to penetrate you. So the, the I guess the skill when facing another B1 is you angle and hope they don't angle and you'll be able to penetrate and they won't be able to penetrate you. That's the skill of driving a B1 versus another B1 and things like M3 Lees and things like that as well. Now to give you an idea though how bad this is for a heavy tank, let's have a look at the AMX40, same tier, this is the light tank. Look at that, 70 mils, 60 mils, turret is 80 mils. This tank has better armor than the B1. And it's supposedly a light tank, although it basically really is a heavy tank. It does have 22 millimeters here, and in one of the games you, you watch uh, 20 millimeters to see what happens when I try and shoot it there. But the gun on this tank on MX40 has uh, 74 millimeters of penetration, I believe. Yep, 74 millimeters compared to our 67 millimeters on the B1. So the AMX40 actually has better armor and a better gun than this supposed heavy tank. It's a rubbish tank. The map is El Haluf. We are top tier. I'm in the tier 1B4. Supposedly heavy tank. Now the enemy does have a Matilda on its side. I'll have to avoid the Matilda at all costs because it will rip me to pieces and I won't be able to penetrate it at all. So hopefully we don't run into it. Now looking at the speed I'm doing here, I don't think I have the engine upgraded yet. So it looks like we've still got the stock engine. And I decide I'm just going to pretend I'm a medium tank and or a light tank, head down this hill and spot the enemy and do the business because a lot of time in these lower tier games, nobody goes down here and you lose because somebody's got to go down here and spot the tanks as they try and come across the middle and I figure it's going to be me I try and get a shot on that uh, was it a T28 but someone else manages to get it before I can get there which is a pity because I can penetrate that tank so I'm going to move up to this rock just up here there's some bushes next to the rock and you can spot pretty well from you can even spot tanks on the ridge but with this standard engine the tank is very slow uh, AMX 40 I'm probably we never going to penetrate the front of its turret has about 80 mils of armor the front hull varies from 60 to 70 mils of armor now I've got a gun with I think 64 millimeters of penetration this angle here I've got no hope of penetrating but as you can see his guns also terrible and he can't penetrate me either so two French tanks the Marder though I can penetrate, although he can normally penetrate me too, but he bounced off me there. So Panzer 1 up C up there. The Panzer 1 C won't be able to penetrate me. Now I'm aiming here at the back of the tank. Now that area I'm aiming there, the top back, is only 20 millimeters thick. And we're bouncing off it. 
the T127, we managed to put a shot into him. And Mix is still bouncing off us. I'm showing you this game basically to show you that, look, there are some crappy tanks that will bounce off you. So the armor does work well against some poor gun, poorly gunned tanks. Got to remember that the AMX-40 is a light tank, supposedly, although it's got heavy tank armor but a light tank gun. Much like us, really. We, we are really basically a... Uh, we've got pretty much heavy tank armor with a light tank gun. And even aiming at that top deck when we hit it, we still can't penetrate the 20 millimeters of armor just because it's sloped. Really, I think there's a bit of a problem there. It really should be penetrating it. I'm not sure why it's not, but uh, it really should have been penetrating that armor. And we're trying to get another shot on this martyr. He actually gets one into us for 109. We can't take many shots like that. Uh, he, he is a tank that we can reliably penetrate though, so... Uh, he, he's the biggest threat to our health, but he's also our best chance of getting penetrations and a kill. And I've been pretty careful. I've been keeping my armor as angled as possible. I'm not giving him anything too flat to shoot it, but the AMX does manage to penetrate me there. Uh, he is getting damaged by the tank, so we're probably getting a fair bit of spotting damage here because I'm not damaging him, but I probably am doing spotting. The martyr misses us, fortunately, and I get a shot into him, bit of a... Not a very well aim shot, but it goes in. I was going to chase him, but then I see there's a tank destroyer on the opposite hill. If I go any further forward, he'll have shots on me. So I pull back again. And yeah, this tank is, as I said in review, a lot quicker once you get the tracks and engine upgraded. And you can see here it's still quite slow. Now I'm hoping to get another shot on this Marta here now. And he's not looking at me. He's a dead duck. Yeah. Okay, good. I should say dead duck, I should say that about the AMX-40 because it actually looks like a duck. Alright, now finally I've got someone here helping me. So the AMX-40 popped up again and the Matilda kills it. The Matilda gun has no problems going through that armor. He's got well over 100 millimeters of penetration compared to our 67 I think it is. So yeah, no problems for the Matilda. So I'm slowly going up this hill, see if I can spot some more from the bushes. We've pretty much got this game won now. They've only got uh, four tanks left, and we've got uh, eight, I think. I'm just trying to spot first before I move forward. Can't see anything, so now I'm moving. So yeah, this is tier four games are really different. If this was a tier five game, oh look, T127 hiding back there. We managed to get the side of him. He actually bounces off us because we are kind of angled to him. And there is a martyr up at the top of the hill there. He's now disappeared. So I continue to move forward in the hopes, the remote hopes, that I might get another shot on somebody before the game ends. But I'm so slow that I don't think I'm going to get up the hill. I can't get a shot on that tank. And I'm going to start heading over there. But by the time I get there, he's going to be dead. So I decide, no, I'll just keep going up the hill. Something might happen. You never know. God, it's slow. <laughs> oh, he's running Panzer 1C, he's running away, he's running from the Martyr. So it looks like the Martyr's chasing the Panzer 1C. We might get a shot. Here he comes. Enemy armor One shot. Gotcha. Yay! Hey, that was fortunate. Alright, so we managed to get Steel Wall and Cool Headed because we did bounce a lot of shots from tanks with pretty poor guns like us. Uh, we managed to get actually Class 1 out of that, even though we did do a lot of damage, we did a fair bit of spotting. Okay, next screen. So you see we've actually finished on top for experience. And did we finish on top for damage? Pretty close to it, I think. No, not quite on top. I think this the artillery UE-57 or whatever did a bit better than us. But pretty close to it. Um, yeah, not a great team. We just happened to win. And you can see here we fired 29 shots of which 26 hit. So we had no problems with accuracy. Mostly fairly close range firing. About out of the 26 hits, only 10 penetrations. Damage was 422, which is okay for uh, this tank. Hits received... 
61, penetrations 6, non-penetrations 55. So yeah, we, we were firing with a weaker gun and, have, and being fired at with weak guns as well. And we, our army is not too bad against those sort of tanks. But like I say, Matilda, anything like that, or any tank destroyers can easily penetrate you. And tier five, every tank can penetrate you. Uh, enemy vehicles spotted five. Vehicles damaged three, destroyed three. That's pretty good effort. And 431 assistance damage, which is also not bad for this tier. And yeah, we made a bit of money. So we got um, 600 and is that 88? I can't read it properly here. XP, which gave us a class one. So yeah, I do. I think about 800 will be a mastery in this tank. Let's get this show on the road. Map is airfield. We are top tier again, top of the tree. Um, I couldn't find a tier five game worth showing. Uh, life was just too short. Unfortunately, once you're seen, pretty much any tier five tank in the game will tear you to pieces. The armor is doesn't just doesn't hold up at tier five at all, and their guns do, in general, at least twice as much damage as this gun. And you generally can't penetrate. There's very few tier fives you can even penetrate. Uh, so yeah. Now I'm going up for a position I really like on this map now after seeing uh, Q Fragger take it in one of in his Chiri video. And I doubt though that I'm going to get there in this tank because this tank's so slow. But I'm going to try for it and I figure, hey, what the hey. You can't get it if you don't try. So as you can see, uphill, it's not exactly fast. But it's a heavy tank, supposedly. Yeah, it's a heavy tank with medium tank armor. And amazingly, we get up here without getting shot. And there's a Chihei. Chihei doesn't have very good armor, so we've got a good chance of penning here. Although we do bounce that shot. I'm aiming for the part of the armor that's as flat to me as possible, that corner there. He's managed to put a shot into me for 82. Just taking a blind shot there, I thought that martyr might have been sticking out a bit behind the bush. So he's obviously hit me a turret because my turret is damaged. Can I get a shot on this T70? Oh, back of his turret. Ricochet. Ricochet. Yeah, that one went in. That one went in. Good. And he's, someone else gets the kill there. You can see a T50 up there. Who thinks he's hidden? Let's keep blind firing here. I don't know if he's there. He might have been tracked. Actually, he's just bounced one off me. I think I am fairly angled to him at the moment. So now I just decide to just shoot. Just shoot, keep shooting around there. He might still be there. He's not there. I can see I'm hitting the buildings now. LTP. Unaware of my presence, which is how we like it. He's running. Oh, he's coming back. Track hit. hit. SU-76 has armor bounced charged. off us a couple of times now. So the armor holding up actually okay here at tier 4 at the moment. At this sort of range. And we're probably not giving them a lot to shoot at either, which helps. Being very lucky, no one's even come up behind me or tried to get up the back of the hill here, so. Gun does have quite good gun depression. We haven't had too much trouble shooting down at any of the lower targets. LTP about to cross our sights. Penetration. That's pretty good for 334 meters. Missed with that one though. And M5 Stewart. Blow away the cover with the first shot. Second one goes in. And he's too clever and starts to move. Good on him. Now we see the SU-76 there. Not sure if that hit. Going to put a few shots in there just in case. And I can see trees going down in the back there. So I'm just going to try and blow away this cover. So even if I can't hit it, it may expose it to um, my teammates and they can shoot it. 
ammo is very cheap in this tank, so it's worth using. It's quite good at blowing away cover in that respect. Although the gun's not exactly powerful, so sometimes it takes a lot of shots to blow cover away, but... Oh, someone got that one. Okay, here's the steward again. Now, unlikely I've got any chance of hitting it, but... Same with that T-50, but I figure, hey, if I just keep blowing the cover away, because my teammates are starting to make their way up there, we'll give these guys nowhere to hide. I'll take a... Oh! That was... Uh, wow, we didn't have much to aim at there, and uh, we managed to hit it. Now, considering the accuracy of this gun isn't that good, that was uh, a nice shot. Very happy with that. So, once again, just blowing away some cover, make it really hard for this M5 Stuart to hide anywhere. Helping teammates to keep it spotted. And there's only one tank remaining. And I chase after, I take a bet that is in the uh, sort of top left area, round sort of, uh, I don't know. A3 or something, but I make I'm wrong. I go there and he's not there. He's somewhere else and someone else gets him So that's pretty much the end of the game So not a bad game for the B1. We managed to get class 1 and a high caliber badge as well And we did hit quite a few tanks We can see here that we did finish on top for experience and on top for damage as well over a thousand damage is, is very good for this tank, I think. Now we fired a lot of shots. We fired 52 shots. Of those, 23 hit. So, not the greatest uh, shooting. Not a real accurate gun. And uh, a lot of tanks were moving. But yeah, not super accurate. However, at this tier, of the 23 shots we fired, we had 22 penetrations. Sorry, 23 shots that hit, we had 22 penetrations, which is really good. Uh, very good. So, it was penetrating pretty well at this range. We didn't have anything tough to shoot at there. Like, there weren't any Matildas or any of the tough tier 4s around. So, uh, we were lucky in that respect. Uh, damage of 1019 is, is, like I say, very good for this tank. We received 5 hits, only 3 of those penetrated. So, it did bounce a couple of shots. And... Um, Oh, we've got a bit of splash damage too. I didn't know that. So some my Artie must have fired a shot at us. Uh, let's see. We spotted one, damaged six, destroyed two. Pretty happy with that. Tiny bit of assistance damage as well. And for once in this tank, we made some decent coin. And uh, it's obviously a pretty good profit as well. And the, what is it? 693 experience was enough for class one. So I imagine around 800 XP will give you uh, master in this tank. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching my review of the B1. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ. Have fun.